Hello, my name is Stephen Daniel with the Avaya Serviceability Engineering Team. This video is about how you can add a managed element to your Secure Access Link Gateway with SNMP v3 support. Before we begin, please keep the following points in mind. Support for SNMP v3 is only available for Secure Access Link Gateway 2.x or greater. Not all of our products support sending SNMP v3 traps, so please make sure to always consult your product's documentation. The Solid Gateway still supports SNMP v2, so using SNMP v3 is optional and not a requirement. Also, please make sure you have the following information for the device you intend to add. The host name, the device IP address, the solution element ID and product ID assigned to your device by Avaya. Additionally, you'll also need the following SNMP v3 details for your device. Unique engine ID, SNMP v3 username, authentication protocol, authentication password, privacy protocol, and privacy password. Please note, if you are unsure on how to obtain any of these details for your device, please consult your product's alarming or maintenance documentation as it will vary from product to product. We'll start by logging into our cell gateway. If you are logging into a standalone cell gateway, you'll need to log in with a user that has administrator level permissions or higher. If you're logging into a system platform cell gateway, you can log in with the admin account or any ASG protected login such as Craft, INETS, or INIT. I'm already at my login prompt of my cell gateway, which happens to be on system platform, so I'll be using the admin user account here. I'll enter that into my login field. I'll then provide my password and click the log on button. Once authenticated, I will be brought to the Secure Access Link Gateway Managed Element Configuration screen. Now, adding a managed element to your cell gateway with SNMP v3 support is nearly identical to adding any other device, but with one additional but very important step of providing your device's SNMP v3 details. Let's begin by clicking on the Add New button on the lower part of the screen to first add our device to the cell gateway. I'll click that now, and after a few moments, this will present us with a form where we'll need to provide our details. I'll first provide the device host name. I'll then need to enter the IP address of my device. We can leave the NIU field alone as this is only used for older devices, which alarm out over a serial port and doesn't apply here. I now need to select the model type to match the device that I'm adding. Now, in this tutorial, I'm adding a system manager device, so I'll use the drop down list here to find the system manager model, then select that. Below that, the product field will default to the appropriate value. I'll next enter my unique solution element identifier, provide my device's product ID, and finally I'll place a checkbox next to the provide remote access to this device, and leave the checkbox next to transport alarms from this device checked, as I would like to enable both remote access and alarming. I'll confirm that all of my details are correct, and after having done so, click the Add button below to add my device. Now that our device has been added to our cell gateway as a managed element, all that's left is to provide our SNMP v3 parameters. On the left navigation pane, under the Secure Access Link Gateway list of menu items, we'll click on Alarming SNMP. From here, I'll need to expand the list in the Manage Device field to find my system. As you can see, it's right here, so I'll go ahead and click that to select it. I'll then click Edit so that I can provide the required parameters. Now, prior to entering my device details, I need to make certain that I click the checkbox Support SNMP v3 Trap. Otherwise, my gateway will not process my SNMP notifications. I'll go ahead and do that now. Next, I'll enter the engine ID that I obtained from my device, the SNMP v3 username that I've defined on my system manager, the auth protocol and password. For my system, I'm using MD5 though SHA is also an option depending on how you've configured your system. And finally, I'll enter my privacy protocol and password. Again, here I've set up my system manager with AES, but DES is also an option and supported. Once I've added all of my details, I'll confirm that everything is correct, and after having done so, press apply to commit my changes. Now, these changes won't go into effect until after I've restarted my gateway services but since I'd like for this to take effect immediately, I'll go ahead and do that now by pressing the link above. I'll then press Apply. I'll be asked to confirm this action and acknowledge a system message. 
to do so, I'll click OK. My gateway services will be restarted, and once that completes, our cell gateway is now ready to receive and process SNMP v3 traps. Thank you for your time today. We hope this information was useful. We welcome comments, questions, and feedback at mentor at avaya.com or on Twitter at avaya mentor. Thank you for choosing Avaya.